Good morning. Welcome to worship this Pentecost Sunday. I want to welcome those who are worshiping online, and yes, Ashley Han, we will continue to do virtual services, so you are welcome, and we hope that you will continue to tune in. Um, those are available for people that worship with us online. We have our group of followers, and so we're happy to keep doing that. Um, I know masks are not comfortable, and it's hot, but we're getting there. Our um, leadership board will be meeting on the 1st of June, and so expect some changes coming to our mask and our safety protocol policies in June. So hang with us, we're getting there, and we appreciate everyone who continues to worship. Let's begin this morning with our first song, and stand if you are able. It is 2117, Spirit of God.
Please join me in the call to worship. The spirit descends like a dove, bringing peace to unite the world in a just and caring community. The spirit comes like a breath, bringing life to renew the people of God. The spirit spreads like fire, bringing energy for witnessing to the love of God. Spirit of the living God, come to us and transform our lives by your power. And please join me in the unison prayer. Holy God, like a rushing wind, your spirit moved upon the first disciples of the day of Pentecost. And like a purifying fire, your spirit seared their hearts and minds with the message of salvation. Send your spirit upon your church in this time and place. Stir up our courage to witness to others that we may join with the saints of the church to proclaim to the world your mighty needs, power in Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated to sing our next song, number 347, Spirit Song. The scripture reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound from heaven like the howling of a fierce wind filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered, 
They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, look, aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? All of us from so many different regions, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some of them even, or some asked each other, what does this mean? And others jeered at them saying, they're full of new wine. Peter stood with the other 11 apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem know this. Listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk, as you suspect. After all, it's only nine in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness and the moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes. And everyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. Thank you, Dan. I would invite the children to come up for children's time. Hola. Come on. Mm, that's mahalo. Hola is hello in Spanish. Okay, what's hello in Swahili? Oh, I stumped him. It's a jambo. Jambo. How about Mandarin Chinese? Anyone know? Ni hao. Very good. How about Texan? Howdy. <laughs> or how about just hi? So today is what we called Pentecost. And what that means is what, what Dan read about where all the disciples were gathered. Yes, the balloons. And all of a sudden the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, came on them like a flame of fire. And I can see that our candles could use a little Holy Spirit today. We're going to fix that. But anyway... Holy Spirit came upon them, and suddenly they could speak so that everyone could understand them. And it was amazing. And because they were all talking different languages, of course, people thought that they were just being silly or that they might have been having a little too much wine, but they weren't. It was a gift from God that everyone who needed to hear the message of Jesus could hear it. And so today we're celebrating because that's also the story of how our church began. And so it's a... What does this say? Birthday. birthday. It's the birthday of the church. So we have streamers. And what are these? Yeah. Balloons. What are they for? Because this is when our church began. You know, like when you were born, you have a birthday celebration. So when we think about when our church began, this is what we celebrate, is the day of Pentecost. And balloons add a lot to any celebration, right? They do, and I thought I had one in my pocket. How about this one? It's a balloon. Just like this, we can have a party with it? No. no. What does it need? It needs some air. And just like us, sometimes we can be flat and lifeless, and guess what happens when the Holy Spirit comes? You were all wondering if I was going to be able to do that. I was too. So just like the Holy Spirit, we can be filled, and then we are ready to celebrate all that God can give us, right? Right? Awesome. And we are here today waiting for the Holy Spirit to fill this place so that we're all like fun balloons. 
And so today we're also talking about how we love and serve one another in the church. Do you know what love is in Spanish? How do you say love in Spanish? Amor. And in Swahili it's upendo. And in English it's what? Love. And in Hebrew, which is what Jesus would have spoken, or Aramaic, it's called, oops, sorry, it's called ahav. How about smiling? Let's all smile in Spanish. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. How about if we smile in Swahili? Right? Okay. And let's all smile in, in uh, Mandarin Chinese. Come on, you can do it. Do it. See? Because love and kindness and serving one another as the church, which is the birthday that we're celebrating, is the same in any language, right? Let's pray. God, thank you for filling us with the Holy Spirit so that we can celebrate your love and we can serve others. We know that there are many ways that people live in different cultures and speak different languages, and we all even have different things that we call things. Help us to respect that and to use the gifts that you have given us to reach everyone for the love of Jesus. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Do I have enough balloons? One, two, three, four, five. Let's try it. Go ahead. If we need more, we'll have Pastor Mark go get some. Do we have enough? I think we might be one short. Here, you take that one, and we'll get you one, okay? All right, you can go back to your seats. Pastor Mark is on his way to get a balloon. Who needs one? Does everyone have one? Well, he's going to go get me one then.
Thank you. <laughs> this is our last week in the worship series called Walking with Jesus and the essential faith practices that all Christ followers find foundational. They are foundational for your spiritual help. And Guy's checking microphones, so I'm going to give him a second to switch the slide. <laughs> We all have to juggle lots of things. But worship is what we do together as a community and also strive to make a part of our everyday lives. Prayer and listening for God is what we do together in worship some, as part of worship, but also that we strive to make it a part of our everyday lives. Are you sensing a theme here? Last week, we talked about the young rich man who wanted so badly to follow Jesus, but he was wealthy, and Jesus asked him to give up his material possessions and to trust God and to put God first in his life above all else, and he couldn't do it. And sharing and giving is something that we do together as a community of faith. And we heard about how we are created in the image of a generous God and how we are to make generosity Something we should strive for in our everyday lives. What else have I got up there, Guy? Oh yeah, that's the title of my message today. And then there's a, there's a cartoon I found that sort of sums it all up. Oh shoot, was that today? So today, the scripture is about the birth of a community of faith who strived to serve together and were filled with the Holy Spirit and were gifted with the ability to speak to others about Jesus and the amazing good news of eternal life in languages and ways that others could understand. Talk about serving. And we want this Sunday to be about also the birthday of the church and how we all ended up here on Sunday mornings or whatever day we worship on. Worshiping, praying, and wrestling with God's word and revelation to us about how to live our lives and how to move and have our being in community in God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And that's a big part of it. The early believers gathered together and tried to make sense of it all. And together they knew that Jesus had commissioned them to go out in his name and share this message with others in the manner and through the way that they lived their lives and they added to their numbers of believers. So if we keep reading in Acts 2, verses 42 to 47, we read this. The believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the community, to their shared meals, and to their prayers. A sense of awe came over everyone. God performed many wonders and signs through the apostles, and all believers were united and shared everything. They would sell pieces of property and possessions and distribute the proceeds to everyone who needed them. And every day they met in the temple, and they worshipped, and they ate in their homes. They shared food with gladness and simplicity. They praised God and demonstrated God's goodness to everyone, and the Lord added daily to the community those who were being served. Radical. Radical community, and it's all in there. Worshiping, praying, sharing, giving, and serving. All of those five foundational practices in its most glorious form. And now we do not live in that culture that is described in that passage. And we do not live in community in that same way. But there is still much for us to take away from the early church. Much that we still do. And some that we have lost along the way. Some that we maybe need to reclaim in a way that is sustainable for us right here in this place. So after the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples in the fierce howling of the wind and they saw the flames dancing on each other's heads and they started talking in languages, Peter used the words of the prophet Joel to explain to those who thought they were all just drinking too much 
that the Spirit has come to announce the dawning of a new age, that God pours out his Spirit on all people, and this is the gift of Pentecost. We are all eligible for this gift, and we are all servants of God and have been given the power to serve others and to spread the gospel message through this service in the name of Jesus the Christ. Jesus' first sermon was drawn from Isaiah 61 as he read the words, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to spread the good news to the poor. And we know that Jesus devoted most of his ministry to the poor, the marginalized, and the second-class citizens. He ministered to the lepers and to those who were physically and mentally ill. He also told us that when we come alongside those who are in need, we are doing it as though we are doing it for him. We are to serve and to work for justice for all of God's people. And now I know when I say the word justice and justice work, and social justice, people get a little cringy. And if you say those words too many times in too many places, people can get downright hostile. But hang in there with me. This work can get to be, mis can be misunderstood as making a political statement, and that is the farthest thing from my mind when I say that we are to serve others and to work for justice in the world. I believe those words may have been co-opted by something else that's mislabeled as, it's called social media. And sometimes I don't find anything social on the social media. So if you cringe when you hear me say those words, let me reframe this for you. It is impossible to be a Christ follower that Jesus longs for without concern for justice and mercy, for the vulnerable, the weak, the marginalized, and the poor. You cannot claim to be a follower of Christ and not have compassion for others. Now, I know that that's a straightforward message and that some people might be uncomfortable, but I want you to know that we have these things. It's in our principles. They're called social principles, which we still have today, and yes, we want to ignore them, and yes, we don't want to feel uncomfortable and talk about them, but they're right there. And John Wesley and the Methodist revival that he started in the 18th century grew into countless social justice programs. Wesley taught us to hold our spiritual lives, our own personal prayers and worship and Bible study in balance with engaging in transforming the society around us. Now, true holiness was not simply about refraining from evil and doing good as individuals, but it was about loving one's neighbors and not just hoping to transform them into Christ followers, but taking care of their needs, making sure they had food and clothing and health care and education. And early Methodists started schools and hospitals, and health clinics, and universities, and orphanages, and ministries for the homeless, and feeding programs, and job training centers, and on and on. So this is what I'm talking about when I say justice. Making sure that the systems support the needs in the community and that everyone has access to them. It is as simple as that. And we do this in our church right here. I am here to remind you that we are serving. We have our emergency fund. Last night, Carla and Tim Camorris took all of our offerings down to Summerfield United Methodist Church. We have a community garden. We have a clothes closet. We have food pantry support, Milwaukee Rescue Mission. We are making personal dignity kits. Endowment grants that we have we are so fortunate to be able to help organizations in our community. I'm just going to read you a part of the list of what we gave to this year through our endowment. The Albrecht Free Clinic, Exploit No More, Friends Domestic Abuse Shelter, Hartford Food Pantry, Love is Greater Than Hate, Medical Center Foundation, the uh, National Association of Mental Illness in West Bend, Northcott Neighborhood, Slinger Food Pantry, Summerfield United Methodist Church, Washington County Anti-Trafficking Advocates, we are doing this work right here, and it is good work. We are beacons of hope, and I am more than humbled to serve among you. So my message today isn't that we need to create opportunities for serving God. We have them. We need to celebrate them and find ways to participate in them. Because following Jesus means that we will continually be asking, how do we as a church 
care for those who have needs in the community. You must love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. And oh, that second one is so hard. But we wrestle together with learning to love our neighbors. And the good news is that the foundational practices that we've been talking about build on one another. Because when you worship with an open heart, and when you pray for God to be in relationship with you, and through you, and through this faith community, and you strive to put God first in your life, then giving and sharing and serving are natural. Just a natural response and part of your everyday life. And you will be open to being interrupted by the Holy Spirit to serve others, like I was on Thursday. Thursday's not my normal day in the office, and I came in to do some work on the altar, and we received a phone call that someone needed help. And Connie looked at me and said, do you want to take it? Do you want to call her back? I could have said, no, just take a message. But no, I called her, and it was an immediate need that I was able to go and take care of for a single mom who was in between paychecks. And I was able to listen to her and to pray with her. So what I want you to be reminded of is that the five foundational practices that I've given you are not just a checklist. It's not intended to be something that you just work through to get a desired outcome, which is eternal life. What I've given you are tools that you can use to do what this is all really all about. Cultivate and nurture, nurture a relationship with God and with each other and by loving yourself and loving your neighbors. And just as I shared with the children, we can all speak differently we can all have different gifts, and we have different ways that we serve. But loving and serving others is the same in any language. Because you will never look into the eyes of someone that God does not love as much as you. May we serve one another well. Amen. And so now we do share in our community together. And I did not bring my phone. I just want to see if there are any prayer requests. I don't see any online. Are there any joys to share? Yes, Danielle. Brianna and Brendan are getting married on Saturday. Got it. Yes, ma'am. I heard. Didn't they all fly in an airplane yesterday? Yes. Some sort of um, something for children out at the airport yesterday. So there's the joy of being able to fly in an airplane. Any other? Yes. Senior class at the high school was able to have their prom last night, and just to see the joy on the kids' faces that they could be together and have something um, to celebrate when their last year and a half of high school has not been anywhere near what they should have had uh, was quite wonderful. Awesome. So the joy of prom. Aiden, do you have a joy? Your baseball games are going to start in June? Yay. Something to look forward to. Yes, ma'am. Linda. Prayers for Mike, who is having back surgery, his third one this week. Also, we got a report that Carla Tuxhorn was able to have her surgery this last week, and she is home. And so now... Guy said, it's just a time of recuperating for another six months to a year. So prayers continue for Carla. Yes.
Okay. So prayers for Patty. And for myself, in, in 2017, I had a breakdown in Anthony Rogers. And I got PTSD from the military. And I hit a wall finally. And I uh, finally got to the VA to try to get some help. And he was the special assault when I was in the military. And so I'm trying to recover from it. or for worse, but still for better now. Congratulations. So Mark. <laughs> Let me see if I can recap this for those online. Uh, Mark Martin shares that prayers are needed for a friend of theirs, Patty, who ended up, she just, just had some horrible health problems. Um, she had a crash, you said? She, she collapsed and broke both of her ankles, and so prayers for Patty to continue to get better. But Mark shares the joy of getting help for his PTSD and um, all that he's finally been able to do. And so he asked his wife to remarry him again for their 25th. It's 25, right? Pardon? 30th. I'm sorry, I was shortening you five years. 30th wedding anniversary. So we congratulate them on that. Anything else? I do um, want to share the joy that on Friday, Mark and I closed on a condo here in Hartford. So we are in the process of doing some updates to it and we'll move on June 10th. So we're very excited for that. Um, I will be gone this next week. Um, Robin will, and Connie will hold everything. Hang on. Um, Connie's got something to share too. But we, um, I will be gone to Dubuque for a week of continuing education, so, um, but always still available if you need anything. Connie. Oh. Prayers for Connie's friends, Jeff and Lisa, who lost their son on Thursday. He was 18 years old. We can pray for that family. We also continue to pray for Corinne Pizzino and Dennis and Kevin and Megan and Sabin and Scott and Tim and I add Harry and Vicki onto that. There's so much going on in the world right now between wars and shootings and hunger and um, COVID in India. I just saw something about an earthquake or a volcano in the Dominican Republic. There's just so much going on right now. Robin. Well, oh, she's right here on my list. It says right there. Joyce Couts um, fell last week and broke her hip. So she did have surgery this past week, and they are looking to move her into a rehab facility actually today. So we continue to pray for her. And I had her circled too. So thank you. Anything else? Yes, Nedra. So Carla Cremora says two cousins are having health problems, but a niece lost her husband. So prayers for Brittany. Brittany shares that she would like prayers for Penelope's grandmother on her dad's side. Great grandma just passed away and it's leaving Chris a little lonely. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit and fill us with your love. Open our eyes to see the presence of God all around us. In the stillness of this sacred space, in the busyness and the noise of our city streets, in the joys and celebrations of our lives, and in the tragedies and the struggles that break our hearts. We ask, God, that you comfort those who grieve. 
We ask that you be with those who are dealing with tests or treatments or cancer or COVID. God, there are so many needs. For those struggling with their mental health, we ask that you be with them. Help them to get the assistance that they need in order to live the life, lives of abundance that you so graciously promise. We ask that you strengthen those who are weak, heal the wounded and the broken, and give rest to those who are weary. We ask that you inspire our warring world to seek peace, to love our enemies. And God, we ask that you ignite a fire in our bones, a passion for justice that cannot be quenched until all of your children are loved, until no one is marginalized or oppressed, until everyone has the opportunity to thrive until the world is re renewed and transformed. God, we ask that you give us a glimpse of your kingdom emerging all around us and drawing us into the new things that you are doing in our church and in our world. It is for your kingdom that we now pray, filled with your spirit, using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen and now we just stop and say thank you to God. We are getting closer to passing the offering plates again. I know some people are excited about that, and some are like, yeah, I like just sticking it in the box when I come in. We may have both. Who knows? But we do thank you for all of your offerings that you give so that we can reach out in love to the world. There is so much ministry that this church does, and as I said earlier, I am so humbled to serve among a church that is so actively involved in doing God's work in the world. So let us stand and sing our thank you to God with number hymn number 94, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. Continue to stand as we sing our song together, our last song, number 2172.
one last announcement. Children, I forgot to remind you that I brought, that Miss Emily brought cupcakes. So I didn't want them in church. Brittany might have had a lot more to clean up than, than normal. So if you see Pastor Mark on the way out, he's in the red Wisconsin shirt, he's got the cupcakes. So that was fair warning, Mark. They're all coming for you. So we are called to love one another. And so I just remind you that you will never look into the face of someone that God does not love as much as you. So go from this place with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said,